Hello, this is David Harper, Bionic Turtle, with an illustration of a currency swap. This is where two counterparties exchange principal and interest in one currency for principal and interest in another currency. To illustrate, consider that we have two firms. The first company here has issued a bond that is denominated in U.S. dollars, and then across the ocean, another company has issued a bond that's denominated in euros and they for whatever reason they could have various motives they enter into a currency swap and in particular the easiest variation is a fixed for fixed currency swap so the first thing they do is exchange the principal and so this is the first difference between a currency swap and a plain vanilla interest rate swap in the interest rate swap, you may recall, the notional is not exchanged. However, in this, a currency swap, the counterparties are going to swap the principal at the start of the currency swap. And typically that will track pretty closely with the exchange rate. So in this case, perhaps there is an exchange of $10 million in exchange for 6 million euros. So that's the exchange of the principal, and then at typically six month intervals, the counterparties will exchange interest payments. And in this version, it's a fixed for fixed currency swap. So that means this counterparty here is paying a fixed rate of interest in dollars on the principal via a financial intermediary to the other counterparty. And this, this counterparty here is paying a fixed rate in euros on the principal via the intermediary to this counterparty, such that in the fixed for fixed currency swap, from the beginning, both counterparties know exactly what the principal exchange will be and the interest rate payments that are swapped at six month intervals. At the end, at the expiration of the currency swap, the counterparties will exchange back the principal. In doing, in conducting this fixed for fixed currency swap transaction, each of these counterparties has transformed its obligation. In this case, the company that started with, prior to the swap, a dollar denominated bond obligation has essentially transformed it into an obligation based in euros and vice versa. This counterparty has transformed a euro denominated obligation into dollar denominated obligation. And because this is a fixed for fixed currency swap, the valuation is easier. It can be broken down into two separate fixed rate bonds or a series of forward forward exchange contracts. There are other variations on the currency swap, including the exchange can be a fixed rate for floating rate or vice versa. A floating one counterparty can pay a floating rate in exchange for a fixed rate in the other currency. Both of these are called cross currency swaps. Also, the counterparties can exchange a floating rate in exchange for a floating rate. So this would be, to continue our example, a floating rate on dollars in exchange for a floating rate based on euro. And finally, we can have a differential swap or diff swap where the principle is the same for both, say US dollars, and the counterparties essentially exchange the rate but based on where the rate is. So in this case, it might be a, the US LIBOR swaps with the LIBOR based in England. And so the difference between those two rates, domestic and foreign, would be applied to the notional. So that's a diff swap or a differential swap. Those are some examples of the currency swap. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.